Hello, y'all. Welcome in Crochet Life and Stuff with Deborah with a book look. And if you're thinking this book looks a little vintage, that's because it is. Nothing wrong with vintage stuff. Sometimes the styles may fade out or whatever, but you can still learn a lot from a book like this. Uh, this is Better Homes and Gardens, Dollar Stretching Decorating. And when I tell you that it's it's a little bit vintage, oh, this is cool. Yes, I bought it used, and in it are somebody's plans that they were using to put together furniture placement <laughs> for their own house. That's pretty awesome, I think. I haven't really looked at that. Um, 1983. Yeah, 83, I was finishing middle school. So that's when this came to be. So it's the 80s. There's a lot of stuff that's probably going to be outdated and stuff, but that's okay. Um, table of contents are pretty straightforward in this book. No pictures or anything on it, but they give you ideas for buying right, planning ahead, style on a shoestring, simplicity saves, one room, four ways. It gives you lots of ideas. Um, and this is just going through, it's actually text about how to buy things and what fabrics to look for and, you know, value for your money and all of that. And they do give you some, uh, the pictures, the way they do them are kind of weird. Look at this. It's like the picture and then you get... You get just like one snippet of it that's in color like it's supposed to be and the rest are just sketches. It's kind of sketchy. Anyway, we'll keep it flipping, see what else we can find. Oh yeah, that's 80s. Yes, it is, but at least it's not that brown couch. That was more 70s, but we all know the brown couch with the weird floral thing on it. This one, this section here, this is probably the most important thing that you can glean from a book like this, which I think I spent a buck on. Um, planning ahead, and it shows you about how to group together your furniture and put it on a grid, cut out little pieces, move it around the grid, and I know that there's software for it now. I know that software and those computer programs did not exist when this book came out. But you don't need the fancy software. You can cut out things and place them and see how it's going to work. And it tells you, um, you know, about room arranging, enlarge by editing. The home edit will tell you all about that. You know I'm obsessed. Uh, try something new. Separate areas. Use vertical space. Little conversation areas. Oh, okay. One square equals one. Oh, oh this is cool. Planning on paper. They give you like an example of graph paper. Of course, graph paper is pretty easy to go out and find these days. But look, furniture templates. I <laughs> love it. Love it. And you can, oh, oh, so many of them. There are pages of them. So you could totally go and just Xerox all of them. Okay, copy them. Maybe not Xerox them. Maybe scan them and print them out. I know. I know I'm old. Uh, chapter three is style on a shoestring. I love the yellow in this room, and I don't know why. I love a nice, warm yellow in a room. I also love deep orange in a room, and I know that makes me a little weird, but that deep burnt orange, it's probably out of date or whatever, but I love it. It's just something that I really like. And this is pre-shiplap generation, y'all. You know how they shiplap everything now? That is not this. Oh, it even tells you how to build stuff. Hello. This here, which is like a bed that they also use as a couch. Like, you know, you're starting, you got your little apartment. It's better than using milk crates for furniture, like I did. Um, tells you how to build it, put it together. So if you're handy with some power tools, or even if you're not, give it a shot. See what you can find. It also a coffee table tells you how to build. I like the idea of this, but I would not want it. And I don't like these little wicker chairs are weird. Look at that. Look at those chairs on the bottom. Weird, right? Right? Okay. Like you're sitting in a picnic basket. Platform units and how to put them together. See, some of the styles, like I said, it's like, whoa. I mean, that is so 40 years ago. But you can get, oh, moving stuff out of the book. You can get some good ideas about how to put things together. And they give you some materials lists and you know how big things should be to measure them out. Um, okay. 
Now this is kind of a cute setup. I'm not that in tune with uh, the way they have the colors. I like the colors, just not the way they have them arranged. But I mean, that's the difference. That's, you know, you can get ideas and be inspired, but not have the same thing. This is kind of cool too, a little platform beds. Platform beds are so handy, especially you got the platform with a drawer in it. You got storage. If for nothing else, and if you live in an area where you have like extreme seasons, where you have to have different clothes for the winter and for the summer, um, in the South, it's not such a big thing. We have like three jackets and that's it. But people that have to have a whole different wardrobe because I mean, you're dressed like the Michelin man to go outside in the winter. You have a place to put your off season clothes so that they're not in the way. This is kind of, I don't like the way that they have this color set up with this room. I think that the floor is too dark. But that might just be personal preference. But again, this was the 80s. And in the 80s, I did not have anything that was even remotely current or fashionable. We were Pope. We were Pope. Like I said, I used milk crates for furniture for a while. Um, simplicity saves. Less furniture, less cost. Okay, that's pretty much what they're saying in this chapter. They put it together very simply. I would like that room a little brighter. Again, they didn't ask me. Wow, I haven't seen chairs like that in a long time. Look at those. <laughs> Just some goofy stuff, some goofy stuff. Now this, I do like. Look at this bedroom. It's very minimal. But you have something nice and colorful, could be a crocheted thing on top there. But everything else is just sort of minimal in design. I like that um, because it's less chaos and it's, sometimes it's easier to sleep when you have less chaos in your room. I wouldn't do it exactly like that, no. But definitely some inspiration. This chapter five here is one room four ways. So I think this is one way that they have it. I haven't gone through and read anything yet. Okay, very beige, very beige. How to change the scene with fabric, it says. Okay, some pops of color and some floral. I, I kind of dig that actually, that floral chair. And I think that really makes a big difference in the room. Just adding something that's not beige, you know, hashtag not beige, uh, to there. Wow, wow. How to change a scene with accents, it says. This is not for the faint-hearted. This change of scene got its inspiration from the framed print hanging over the sofa. Here again, the furnishings stay the same. It's the spirited infusion of color and artful accents that gives the new room its lively look. And when I show you, you're going to know why I went, oh, oh. Totally flipping different, right? That is a bold color choice up there on the ceiling. It really is. Um, very bold. But the same furniture. And paint is relatively cheap. And here's the, uh, how to change the scene with paint. Now, yeah, they really made it different. It is the same furniture. And beige furniture at that. This is from the beige zone. But they made it way more dramatic with that dark paint color, but having some lighter yarn, yarn, oh good grief, lighter art on the walls, and I'm losing those little extras that were in here. And they tell you how to do things with uh, cardboard and stencils and stuff to make some of this. Okay, Smart Solutions, Chapter 6. Oh, oh wow. All right, y'all, the 80s called, and they want all this stuff back. They really do. Uh, <laughs> but it tells you, it gives you some ideas of how to deal with weird shaped spaces. Like, look at that. If you have a space that has like the ceiling that dips down, it's like, what do you do with that? You can do that with the dividing thing, or you could just keep it all one color, or you can do kind of an ombre thing where it's darker at the bottom and it ends up being light at the top. I think that would be cool. But, you know, again, that's just me. Oh, that to me is a bit much. That wallpaper, y'all. What do you think of the wallpaper? It's very busy if you look at it closely. It's not just like a wallpaper. It's got a lot of 
blue in it. I think there's, for me, too much blue in there to go with the red that they have in there. But, yeah. Maybe I would make the chairs blue, too, to match it. But maybe that would be too matchy-matchy. I don't know. I don't know. This is cool. I like the rug underneath that, like, table thing. Looks like it could be crocheted or woven. Not sure. But I like that rug. The curtains I'm not so fond of. But the rug, yeah, I could dig that. And lighting gives you ideas about lighting. We have so many more options for lighting now because LED lights are a thing and it doesn't cost you a small fortune to have lights on. Um, you can leave your lights on and make it pretty and stuff without being like, oh my gosh, every moment that these lights are on, it's costing me three bucks or something. Because yeah, incandescence and incandescence really heat a room too. Yeah, you could totally save on your energy bill. If you haven't switched to LEDs already, as you have a light bulb burnout, switch, do the thing. I think we've got all LED in the house except for like one or two lights that just hadn't burned out yet. You know, we weren't we had fluorescents before, so they weren't that bad. This space over here. Look at this to me looks so it's missing stuff. This here. I think that there needs to be something above the fireplace. To me, that just looks it looks lonely without that thing over without something over the fireplace. But this, oh my gosh, those chairs, those chairs. How many of y'all had those chairs in the 80s and 90s? And I say 80s and 90s because not all of us changed our furniture out every couple of years. We kept things until it completely toe up, right? Yeah, but those chairs have been around. Ooh. Oh, look, somebody has a whip cart. I mean, they used it for a phone then. Remember when phones had a plug into the wall? Uh <laughs> <laughs> they used it for that. But oh yes, most of us have whip carts that do any kind of crochet. That bright red table. I love it. That, especially if you rent, if you've got a table you're putting, especially when you build. This is built out of sawhorses and plywood, y'all. It is not built out of anything fancy at all. That is a cheap way to go. And if you're not, like if you rent, a lot of times you can't paint or anything, bring in that table. You have just brought in a nice pop of color and went, landlord, mm, you know, something like that. This says budget brighteners. Uh, this, cha this chapter seven, you'll find uh, ideas to help enliven a lackluster room. Now, of course, some of them are going to be very, very dated. Um, here, they've, ooh, I've knocked stuff to the floor. Isn't that something? They have decoupaged on plain tiles. That is, that's cute. That is super cute. For me, I wouldn't do the whole thing. I'm going to pause because I got this stuff on my feet. Okay, unpause now. <laughs> Y'all know I'm clumsy, right? Um, but to me, that would be like too much. It's like too much of a good thing. Um, I would love to see the whole backsplash tiled and maybe just have one of those decoupage ones every now and again. But I love the idea. Oh, wow. This, again, a bit much for my taste these days. But look at the way they've done those flowers. And they give you a graph down here how to chart it out so you can paint it yourself. Just, you know, inspiration. Oh, yes. The braided rug. My grandma made so many of those. And she used whatever scrap she had around. Um, <clears throat> my aunt and I at one time worked at a sewing factory and we could take home, you know, they, they would say, okay, these are scraps. You can take them home. We'd have binding and all kinds of stuff. We made t-shirts. So we'd bring them home and grandma would put them together for rug. And she made braided rugs out of them. And they were awesome. Look at this painted floor for a kid's room. That's cute. I could see people doing that in a kid's room. I love these stripes, but not everybody would. But I think that's super cute on the floor. But I'm just so leery of ever painting a floor. It's like, oh gosh, I'm messing it up. Oh wow, that's a bit much. Okay, this is a before, I guess. Vintage bathrooms can be very charming, but their color schemes are often passe. You mean like the color schemes in the Zadie's book? Um, the original color of the tiles, tub, sink, and toilet was rather unappealing shade of pink. Now, with the application of several coats of epoxy paint, all traces of pink have been banished. Oh, wow. 
using epoxy paint, and it even says right here, it's rather difficult to work with because it is. They made all that pink tile blue. And while I like the blue tile, I think that's a bit much for it all to be blue. I would have left made the sink white to pop up against that blue. But again, that's just my my taste. Um, putting wallpaper. I mean, I've never hung wallpaper. It just sounds so difficult. And I've seen so many horror stories of wallpaper. What they've done in an old bathroom to update it, they put a small print wallpaper and a, like a little table skirt around the bottom of the sink. I don't know what this tabletop is. Oh. Okay. I'm going to read it and I'm going to show it to you. This unusual eye-catching coffee table, left, features a 40 by 43 inch photographic blow up of a flower. You can create a similar tabletop by having a photo lab enlarge and custom box mount your favorite photograph on hardboard. Isn't that freaking stunning? And totally unusual. You know your neighbors don't have one just like it. And they've matched fabric colors with it. Okay, yeah. That's not budget at all. They, they went and did some things there. But I like it. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that striped couch has got to go. But the idea to make everything look bigger, adding mirrors. And they always say, you know, a whole mirrored wall is elegant and blunt. No, a whole mirrored wall is very passe. But adding some mirrors, especially those cheap ones, you can get mirrors just like that at Walmart. And you can do stuff to the edges to make them different if you want. You can get them sometimes for five bucks. Sometimes they're 12. I'm all about cheap. I am all about cheap. Love it. Crafty ideas in chapter eight. Oh, and they've got a kitty. She's laying on the couch in an impossible way, but she's got her kitty. Kitty made me happy on that page. And I love that rug. I think it's a crocheted rug. And you know, that's something we can do, right? Oh, it's not crocheted. It's woven. Holy cannoli. Wow. Look at the loom that they have to weave the rug. That is amazing. That, I mean, it's really cool. It's a rag rug. I thought it was a crocheted, but yeah. Batiking, um, hand painting fabrics. You get some really cool fabric ideas out of that. To make a couple of pillows. And they give you tips and stuff on how to do some of these different things. Oh, the shades. Window things and shades. Embroidering shades. I'm sorry. That's never going to never gonna happen for me. No. No. Oh, wow. Carving and staining <laughs> dresser drawers. Wow. First of all, you'd have to hope that you have real wood dresser drawers. Not some of the stuff we find these days. Easy updates. Chapter 9. And I look at this and all I think is, man, that's, that's dated. But 40 years ago, it wasn't dated. I mean, you know. It says, estate sales and consignment shops are good places to look for high quality used furniture at bargain prices. Although the upholstery of a used piece may look tattered and worn, the frame, if it's in good condition, might be well worth saving. That is sound advice. If you find something that is a good stout piece of furniture, it just looks kind of eh, because of the fabric or whatever, get it. Even upholstering a piece like that is way cheaper than buying a good quality piece of furniture. My grandmother once um, reupholstered an entire sofa herself, made her own, um, oh, what's it called? It looks like a little tube of fabric that goes around. I just drew a blank. Did it all. All of it. And she did it in like a jewel tone um floral i loved it i loved the couch it had been a leather couch and it was just it was worn it was it was worn and old but she did that and it turned out awesome this is an interesting kind of a cover it's like they zip on and stuff like that and these days you can buy covers that'll stretch to fit and do stuff with it so that's pretty cool trying that oh little kids room idea 
Those kids are old now, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit much. That's a bit much for me. What do you think of the busy, busy wallpaper there? This is all fabric, a sheared wall treatment. Oh, it's an excellent solution for a room in need of a softening influence. Yeah, that's a lot of fabric, y'all. A lot of fabric. Unless you can find it on total clearance and cheap, that's going to cost you a pretty penny right there. Unfinished finds. Yep, unfinished furniture offers a fabulous way to stretch your decorating dollars. Um, yeah, because you could take that. You could do anything you want with it. You can stain it. You can paint it. You can upholster it if you want to. Sure. Dude totally trying to match his walls there. <laughs> I don't understand that. But, uh, yeah, they've done some interesting things with those. That's why I love going and getting used books at Goodwill and other places because... You never know what you're going to find. Yeah, all of this stuff is like so dated. But look at Dude Man on his little Mickey Mouse phone. Did you ever have one of those? I won one once and then I sold it. I sure did. Save with sheets and fabric. Yes. I have the curtains that are in my bedroom are sheets that were on clearance at Walmart. I didn't even have to sew them. I just stuck the rods through the end. I had to, had to pick out a little bit of the end seam um, to stick the rod through so that I could hang them. But here's another person doing very similar. And of course, you can they, they're doing like privacy around the bed or something. Yeah, I think that would annoy a cat. But, you know, you can still do something like this. You can still make curtains out of sheets. So, hello, cheap sheets. This is a really cute duvet with a big old ice cream thing on it. This is some serious quilting talent right there. Quilting fascinates me. And wow, wow. I mean, I like floral, but those those pillow covers the shams with all the ruffly bits not my cuppa not my cuppa dollar twelve dollar chapter twelve dollar wise windows remember the balloon shades wow and those that does give you a nice pop of color though in a room that's all white but this room isn't all white it's got some busy walls here for y'all whoa Oh my gosh. There used to be infomercials where they made this kind of stuff. You had this like little tool or whatever. And we'll show you how to make your own curtains. And you'll y'all remember it if you remember it, right? Yeah. Um, how to make shades, like roll-up shades. That's kind of cool. If you have some specific, especially if you have some specific decorating that you want to do with it, with a color that you're not going to find anywhere or with a pattern you're not going to find anywhere, that shows you how to do it yourself. Well, look at all the different shades they're showing there. A little section on shades, what they are, how to do them. Woven woods. These are also different shades. windows sketchbook to help you decide what you're doing with your windows like you have windows in the corners windows on a wall by themselves more windows um just all the different types wow even more than i thought energy saving suggestions which wasn't a big topic in the 80s but boy is it now um did you know that as much as 30 percent of your home's total heat loss escapes through the windows Talk about draperies and linings and how to conserve and weather shields and all of that. Lighting. Lighting for less. And nowadays, boy, can you do it for a lot less um, with the different lighting options we have available. That's kind of cool. It's like a Hollywood look, you know. You could almost do that with a strip of LEDs now around <laughs> instead of going through all of that trouble there. 
This is kind of cute. I remember these lights that are like, you know, poofy globe kind of hanging from something. Very simple and actually pretty easy to make. One of the easiest things you can do if you're wanting to revamp something is rewire a lamp. Um, I'm sure there are videos on how to do it out there, but it really is a lot easier nowadays because you're also not having to worry about so much heat because you're using LEDs and they don't put out nearly as much heat. Don't these look like wind chimes? I'd have to call that my wind chime lamp. A lot of different lamp ideas in here. Really decorative, neat stuff. This looks like it's made from popsicle sticks, but I don't think it is. I've seen people do something similar from Dollar Tree materials. So, yeah. Artful Ideas, Chapter 14. About finding stuff to put up on your walls. And people think, oh, I have to have a specific piece of art. Or I have to put family pictures up there. No, you don't. I kind of like this idea with the chessboards. Yeah. That is just a neat way to do it. It adds some warmth to the space. Um, and you can probably pick up vintage ones. And just put them all together. So I really like that. A lot of different art ideas. Including some mixed media ideas. Look at that awesome quilt. Wow. You know, especially if you have... Um, stuff that maybe was handed down, like a quilt, that you really don't want to use that much because you don't want to wear it out and get it torn up. Um, make sure that it is securely and safely attached to something and put it on the wall. Enjoy it instead of having it packed away in a box. Oh, wow. I wish that I had some of the doilies my grandmother made because that would be awesome to do that with. My grandmother could crochet with thread. Not me, not me. But, yeah, that is really cool. I think that would make a neat grouping um, like that. Tips on how to hang pictures to make it look more interesting and not just a picture on the wall. Different collections. Now, I have a cat, so I could never have a collection like this on a table. Neat old bulbs. That is very cool. They're not hooked up to anything. Of course, nowadays, you could do it and hook them up with batteries in them and have them turn on remote control them. Wow. Money saving storage. Look at the old stereo system and the records. Oh my God. Although records are coming back now. People are getting turntables again. I love this. It's out of cubes. Some of us love our cubes. I use my cubes now for a uh, yarn, <laughs> but yeah, they show you how to make cubes out of MDF. Uh, that's really awesome. Oh my gosh. It's a reel to reel tape player. Wow, when's the last time you saw one of those in person? For me, it's been quite a number of years. But they give you the dimensions on how to build this and step-by-step -step instructions, so that's kind of cool. You can do a lot of stuff with wood if you're handy. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not that handy, but I understand how it's supposed to be done. I just, you know, can't get in there and do it. This is kind of cool. Gives you some storage with some privacy behind it, but it still can let that air go through, which I think is, is important for storing a lot of stuff. Very, very cool. Oh, I like your diagonal storage too. I still like those. Tells you how to make some open storage. Penny pinching projects. Ooh. Oh, that's clever. Look at this. That's a bed frame, of course, you know, like I said, with the phones and everything. But it has the plug on the side. This is actually something the hubby was talking about building um, that he wants to do. So, gives you some dimensions there. No, I may have to put a tab in that one. Um... Banquette for seating. It tells you how to make those and what dimensions you should use. Platform beds. Little storage doohickeys. See, even though a lot of this is like super out of date, like style wise, you can still get a lot of use out of it. And for a buck, yeah, I got it for a buck. A lot of table ideas that have storage in it and, and leaves and you're making these yourself. Whoa. Oh, 
I actually kind of like this one. Look at this table. It's a glass top and the base is made out of a door. What? I love it. I love it. That's, that's pretty stinking awesome. Yeah. Clever AF if you ask me. Ooh, I like that coffee table too. Glass top with like that neat uh, wood pattern underneath. Look at this one with the lights in it. Oh my gosh, yes. Sorry, I'm getting way too excited. Uh, tips and techniques uh, for how to, doing painting, hanging wallpaper, um, how to do a lot of things, how to upholster things, how to upholster your walls, which that was a thing for a while. Um, different things with doing windows, drapery shopping. It's just pages and pages of how to's and care and cleaning of things. And look at this, furniture first aid. What to do if you uh, stain something or whatever. Yeah. Shelving suggestions on how to put those up. What sizes you should use for your shelf spacing, depending on what you have. Paperback books require eight inches, hardback books 11, oversized books 15. Record albums, eight track tapes, cassette tapes, circular side trays but it tells you you know how far apart things have to be miscellaneous lamps and wiring tips like i told you rewiring the lamp is like the easiest thing ever you can actually buy the kits at walmart they have them on the uh, wiring the light bulb aisle easy and cheap so if you find a cool lamp that you really love the style of but you're not so sure it's safe to turn on or maybe it won't turn on at all get a rewiring kit do the thing then you plug it in and put your bulb in it. You're golden. And lit up at that. Picture hanging tips and then pages and pages of credits and an index. Wow, a really comprehensive index too. So, all right. It's a book from the 80s. Um, but definitely well worth the money I spent for it. I spent a buck. Keep your eyes open when you go to the thrift stores. Go look at the books. Don't necessarily look at it and think, you know, all that crap's dated. I'm not going to do anything with it. But in something that's like quality, like Better Homes and Gardens, you know, flip through it. It may have some good stuff for you. I definitely enjoy it. I enjoy looking through my older books that I find. And that's mostly how I buy books is from the thrift store. Now, sometimes they're brand new. Most of the time, they old. Okay, they old like me. I was around when this was out. Somebody in my family may have had one of these. But... Now I own my own copy and it makes me happy. And I do have to show that one thing to the hubby because he was actually talking about wanting to build something like that for behind his bed because of needing a place to put the cell phone and the lamp and you know, all the things. Bonus. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming by and for flipping through an old book with me. Book look is always a good time. I hope that you checked out some of the uh, playlists that have popped up across as we've gone. And uh, hopefully I will see you very, very soon. Bye, y'all.